Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. My name is Mike with Paradigm Rigging. Today we are going to be talking about the Broadway Bluetooth uh, 5 8 inch load cell. So this is the unit I have over here. Um, this thing is a great product over here. More of an entry level line towards a full Broadway system. Um, same technology, like similar technology, load pin, all that. But uh, we're packaged in a Bluetooth transmission over here. So we can send uh, transmit back to iOS, Android devices. It's about a uh, best case scenario 90 meter range, which is pretty impressive over this. And you can do about um, 12 units back to a device. So some of the physical components over here, we're gonna just kind of take a look at. We have our main enclosure over here. Um, this thing, I, I mean, it's made of plastic. So we just wanna be uh, mindful of how we're handling units. We're not throwing them in boxes because um, that could plausibly be prone to damage. So we have the same kind of unit over here. We have our same typical shackle bow over here. So this is a 5 8 inch, five eighths inch shackle. Um, it, so it's a three and a quarter ton capacity uh, load centering bobbin in here. So this centralizes our load right on a load pin to make sure our readings are accurate. Um, our enclosure box, as we mentioned. On the flip side, we have, if we can see here, any of our info in here. Um, if we're talking about our data tag, um, we're gonna reference this later in the video. We're gonna see our digits over here. So it says ID, we have six digits in there. So the data tag is gonna be the last four digits within this uh, ID range over here. And a few other items to take note of. We have this label on the side. We wanna make sure that that data tag also is matching our ID. Um, we have our nut on the side, make sure that's fastened, our clip. And so that's kind of the physical components. Um, on the side of it, when we remove our battery cover in here, so we have two AA batteries. Um, we're using a Duracell Pro Cell currently in here. Uh, Broadway recommends one of the lithium ion uh, AA's, but um, that's kind of where that is. And so we just want to make sure other physical items, this rubber gasket, if we're using it outdoors, just to make sure we don't have any dust, debris, make sure that's clean. And like I said, two AA batteries. The one thing about the Bluetooth items, once they're powered, you'll see this little flashing LED on the inside. I don't know if you can see it on the video. That will be flashing as well as this outside light. That is flashing at the sample rate of our, uh, what we're transmitting data. The Bluetooth load cells do not shut off. Um, so they are, once they're powered, they're already always transmitting. Uh, we're gonna talk about the configuration, how to set up a project in this video. In a separate video, we're gonna be talking about the configuration of any of these settings within the load cell over here, uh, how we're gonna pair into that, re-zero the cell, any of those items. So um, follow along th for this first video, check out the next video when that releases, and hopefully this should get you going on your new Bluetooth load cell. So the Broadway Bluetooth uh, toolkit, that's gonna to be available for you in the Apple App Store or Android, uh, what the App Store is on that side. Uh, I believe it's Google Play Store. Um, so what we're gonna type into, we're gonna go into the App Store. We're gonna open up the Broadway Toolkit. So I have that over here, Broadway Toolkit. We're gonna click open on that. So we're gonna have our Broadway app loading right now. Off our home screen, we can see uh, right now, I have nothing on this home screen. Uh, I believe when you fresh download the app, you're gonna have a demonstration uh, project in here. Uh, pretty simple screen over here. So we have a few items we're looking at. We have our menu button in our top left. So when we click on our menu, we see that we have projects, import projects, and configure transmitters. So we're gonna come back to that one, um, come back to the configure transmitters in a separate video. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about projects. So I'm gonna click on projects, which is bas basically back to this home screen. And we're gonna need to create a new project. So in the top right corner, we're gonna click our plus icon. We have a new project, so we're gonna give it a project name. I'm gonna go quite original here. We're gonna call it test project. Perfect, so we have test project. Next item down, we have icons. So we have a full page of icons available to choose in here. Um, anything which kind of floats your boat in here. So we're just gonna go for happy face today. The view pin, what a view pin is, is essentially it's a pin that the uh, project would have to have and the load cell to be able to uh, read data from each other. So 
where a view pane could be of use for you is if you're in the same room and you have say two different vendors, uh, both with the Bluetooth load cells, you might wanna set yours to a different view pin so that they can't see your load cells or you can't see theirs. Um, should you decide to do that, that's an option. Um, default view pin is four zeros, so we are gonna leave that as such right now. The timeout section just below where it is currently at 12 seconds, I have options to go from all the way from one second up to 30 seconds, so I'll leave it at the default 12. What timeout is, is when we're reviewing the information, Timeout is the amount of time uh, without receiving data from the load cell, whether it's out of range, um, you removed a battery, any of the such, that until our display tells us that we are out of range. Now, the important part we're going to come into here, we see link transmitters. Currently, we are showing zero. So I'm going to click link transmitters, and that's going to open up a page. Top right corner, we're going to hit our plus icon. And I have two options to add linked or to link a transmitter. So I can either do a data tag and then description. So data tag, I would uh, copy it over um, from where I pointed out just in the intro of this video on the side of the load cell. So the data tag, you'll see a, it'll say ID and there'll be six digits behind it. The data tag is the last four digits of that six digit ID. And then we can add a description. The easier way, which I'll take you through we're gonna hit the magnifying glass in the top right corner. That'll bring us here. We will see all the transmitters that we can see right now. So currently we're seeing uh, my load cell over here with the FB2F. So we're gonna come in here. If we click our three dots, I have, that opens us up. I believe you can actually just click anywhere off that one. So we're gonna see our data tag, FB2F in description. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna call it cell one. Click save, and now we have one link transmitter. If we had multiple load cells in the system, we're gonna go through the same process. We're gonna click the plus. We're gonna take a look for that load cell. We're gonna add it in, give it another name, potentially cell two, three, four, etc., And then we'll have it back in our link transmitter page. After linking transmitter, we will click back. We have a project. So we have a project, we have it named, we have happy face in here with our icon, timeouts default, one link transmitter, we can click save. Perfect. So now we can see on our project page, uh, we have our test project over here. So let's click on test project and see what we get. So right now it says no tiles found, please add one. So back to the top right corner, three dots. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna click add a tile. So tiles are how we're reading data in here. I have five options as we can shoot, as we can see here, sorry. Uh, we have metric, gauge, tank, indicator, chart. So metric is gonna be straight numbers. Gauge is gonna be, think of like a speedometer style, a gauge from your, your lowest set value to your highest set value. Tank is gonna be the same thing, but just a vertical thing. Indicator will go a certain color if you hit a certain weight threshold, and then a chart you can choose um, kind of a time, like how often this chart updates to see kind of fluctuations of this weight. So we're gonna do simply a metric item in here. We're gonna open that up. Uh, we're gonna call it, let's just call it a uh, cell one. And you could be calling this whether it's your individual load cells, stage left PA, stage right PA, uh, you know, lighting one, lighting two, three, four. Um, or if you also had a total, um, say video total, uh, you could do this. And then within our expressions, um, I'm gonna point out just next how we're gonna, how we could add them up in a total value. So we're gonna have, call this cell one. Uh, expression is what load cell it's looking for. So in expression, we're gonna click on that. Uh, we have our kind of editor in here. so. Um, it's, it's pretty basic. Think of kind of using a calculator, except for you're adding load cell, um, you know, choose what function, like load cell plus load cell for your total, anything like that. So I'm gonna do transmitter. I'm gonna see all my transmitters in here. For this one, we just have one cell, so cell one, and that's perfect. If I were doing a total weight off something, I would do transmitter plus transmitters, let's say cell two, 
etc. And I would just keep moving down the line, but I'll delete that right now because we just have the one load cell. So it's pretty straightforward for what you want to do, whether you want to do something simple or complicated. So we have cell one, we'll save. Next down we have working units. So we have source units and working units. The item to take note of source units is the um, weight or how it's being read uh, natively coming out of the load cell. So the load cell is transmitting or capturing the weight in kilograms. And that's just default from the Broadway right now. Um, and that's not a value that we're going to be changing and because we're always it's always sending from kilograms. I will note uh, on the date of this filming, I believe March 27th, 2023, that currently we can still click into kilograms here. We could erase it, anything like that. Um, that's a note that's already made to Broadway that should not be able to be changed. They're working on that. Uh, hopefully we'll see that update soon. If you do happen to change kilograms, you might have to just delete that tile and come back and recreate it. Working units is the units that we're going to be working in, kind of simply named in here. Uh, we are going to call that, uh, we have a wide variety of options in here. Um, most likely in North America, we're going to be going to pounds. Um, but as mentioned, if you want anything else in here, full options. So we're going to take ourselves to pounds. Output value, I have option to do actual value, maximum value, so kind of peak hold of an item or minimum value, so a kind of a trough hold out of that. Um, maximum value, sometimes neat to see the max kind of weight captured on that load cell and whether you did a separate tile for that to see. But we're gonna do actual value. Numeric format is kind of how many decimal places we're seeing. So for, let's for this purpose, let's do 0, 0.00 in here. So we have a few more decimal places if we were to change action, uh, that is when we press and hold on the tile, once we get out of the screen, you'll see more. It can either, if you press and hold, it'll either zero the load cell, zero the tile reading itself, or if we're using the um, minimum hold, maximum hold, it will also reset that for you. So if you're using min max, I find the reset min max is kind of a great toggle to have for you. Um, currently, I'm just going to leave it as none. And then at the bottom, we can see kind of some colors and thresholds. What this will allow us to do is we'll be able to type in if we want to see after a certain weight, uh, the indicator, uh, the, the numbers light up as orange, it'll write that. So it'll be the greater than or equals this number. And say for red, same deal. We're going to go to a higher number. So if you're doing, say, a warning threshold, a overload threshold, it just kind of gives a little bit clearer visual indicator of what we're working with. But looking through here, we have, we're referencing cell one, just as an overview, source units, kilograms, working units is pounds. Output is our actual value. Numeric format is our decimal place. No action. And we'll click save. So look at this, we have our one cell up and we're reading right now. And if I'm pulling on our load cell, we can see now our values are moving up and we have readings off this load cell. It is pretty normal to see some weight fluctuations when I have zero weight off this load cell. Uh, we can see how it's just kind of fluctuating around. Uh, that's totally normal off the load cell to, um, to be seeing in there. What you will also notice is if you're taking the unit from uh, outside, let's say wintertime cold temperatures into indoors uh, heated temperatures, you might see these weights fluctuate in here. Um, it can take some time until the temperature of the load pin itself actually uh, levels out in there. Um, really, if needed, if you need to go and zero the cell, um, follow our next video and that's where we'll show you on the configuration of the cell how to change this zeroing. Um, the other item, when we're doing that tile setup, you could also set it so that you press and hold and it'll zero the item as well. So that weight fluctuation is normal and we have right now our cell and we're reading weights. If you want to do a additional tile, I'll show you one more in here while we're talking about this. Come in here, add tile. 
Let's do a gauge tile this time. So let's do, let's also call it cell one. Cell one, we're gonna look at transmitter cell one. We're gonna save that. Source units, kilograms, working units. We are going to come back down to pounds. And minimum on the gauge, we're gonna do, let's do zero. And just because I'm pulling this uh, by hand right now, let's call our maximum 50 pounds. Perfect, so we have a gauge in here from zero to 50 pounds. When I click save, oh, sorry, I have to do a threshold in here. So let's just do 20 and 40. We'll save that. Perfect, so we can see right now our gauge on the right. So we have options to go from zero and I start pulling on this and we're gonna start seeing that moving as we're going across our, our spectrum off this load cell. So, you know, kind of one of those let's see how far we can get in here so like i was saying given our readings you have a reading you kind of have a speedometer essentially of that weight um speedometer style and this is essentially the basics of how to use your bluetooth load cells so i just want to say thanks for following along in here uh any questions if you like these videos let us know in the comments um subscribe to the page follow along we'll try and I uh, keep posting videos about um, kind of how to use the products in here. And any questions, as always, feel free to email us. And thanks for watching.